Hey, those are Art Garfunkel trees. Mm. Soledad Platz, Nevada. The time, 6.15 a.m. Woke to the Twitter of mm, bombers. <laughs> oh, you got an oil-rich mixture there. The climax of I was planning. Operation A-Bomb Test underway. Well, that's an original name. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't it be something like Operation Thor's Hammer? You know, something with pizzazz? Yeah. Radar with eyes that never sleep. Special equipment go into operation. All orders are carried out with split-second precision. Uh, wait, the outer limits is on. I'll be right back. Warning is given to all commercial aircraft to stay out of the test area. Go right ahead. Detonation minus 70 seconds. Christopher Walken announcing. <laughs> take to the air, carrying sensitive instruments and nuclear... Ready to record the radioactivity from the closest possible vantage point. There's our Peter Graves. Yep. Yeah. Detonation minus 40 seconds. See? The bomb-carrying plane nears the target. Tension mounts as all members of the flight crew anticipate the task to pinpoint the bomb on a tiny circle of Earth below. I'm ratcheting the tension by narrating. Now the plane wings its way toward ground zero. Warning signal is sounded. Mm -hmm. All observers prepare for the blinding flash of the bomb. Mm -hmm. Detonation minus 20 seconds. We're all gonna die. Over. Command of the plane is given to the bombardier. Tom Bombardiero. Oh. Ground zero dead ahead. <laughs> the key man now goes into action. Go, go. Detonation minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven. Whoa, whoa, wait, too six, fast. Those aren't seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Nice walk in again. Ignore the other beginning. This is the real one now. Here we go. Okay. Beginning or goes. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day. It's weird. <laughs> Bob, you feel kind of see through y. <laughs> Woo! I'm glad light doesn't pass through us anymore. That was weird. You can make the position report now. Have the figures ready. You know, Joe, I'm really sick of looking at the back of your head. Control from Tar Baby 2. <laughs> Tar Over. Baby? Uh, this is Cracker 5. Go ahead, Tar Baby 2. We're circling ground zero at radius of 7.5 miles. Tar Baby. <laughs> Altitude 1, 5, zero, zero, zero feet. This is good Third cinema. Four, it's important to five, know the exact four, altitude of the plane. Mm -hmm. Roger and over. Roger Andover, I went to prep school with the lad. This is Dr. Martin. Here are the readings. 0.378 negative. They bombed Second some more negative. stuff. Yeah. Come on. Come on, let's see it. Nuke, 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 Bomb on. Radiation 0.4. Over. Roger, proceed according to plan. Wilco and up. You want me to pop in some Wilco? Is that what you said? We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know where. Take her in closer. Okay, Dr. Martin. Here's another directing tip. Put your lead actor in a giant face mask. Have him mumble through it. Mm -hmm. Sir Ralph Richardson. Oh, I, I think. Uh, why do we keep turning into a toy? We have to keep at least two miles from the center of the column. The radiation was too strong. My transistor radio is on the fritz, too. What's that thing shining below? It, it's a penny. A bright, shiny penny. No, it doesn't. Of course, to me, penguins look like doorknobs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fireball. Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin, we're in trouble. Dr. Martin, we need big, chunky shoes. What else? What else? I can't. I should have learned how to fly. <laughs> it's turned into a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah. Ah! Wow, look at him go down, huh? No place like home. No place. Tar Baby 2 from base. Come in, Tar Baby 2. Um, ow, over. Come in, Tar Baby 2. Mom, Tar Baby 2 won't talk to me. We've lost contact, sir. Baker 2, sir. Yes, sir. 
All patrol craft in test area. This is a May Day. Repeat, this is a May Day. Bring your Maypoles and brightly colored ribbons. Be prepared to lollygag. They were just so damn sure that showing shots of planes would have people flocking into the theaters. <laughs> Tar Baby 7? How many Tar Babies do they have here? Ship appears completely demolished. No sign of survivors. Over. Roger, Tar Baby 7. You going to the dance tonight? Circle wreckage at 1000 feet until arrival of helicopter rescue unit. Who's been wearing my face mask? It smells like hummus. This is the end. Oh, how I wish it were the end. <laughs> This is your eye in the sky. Traffic over the Mojave slow due to a small Sabre jet crash on Route 66, and those pilot guts can be slippery, so go slow. Hello, Colonel Brokream. Uh, Dr. Kruger, Colonel Banks speaking. Would you mind coming into my office right away, please? My chin ass is flaring up. Thank you. As I was saying... My darling Ike. <laughs> Our search planes found the wreckage of your husband's plane, Mrs. Martin. A rescue crew was sent out, but... But they must have reached the wreckage hours ago. Why can't they find him? I honestly don't know, Mrs. Martin. Yes, come in. No! Oh, he teleported. <laughs> from the wreckage. Weird. And according to all reports, no one could have bailed out. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Martin. Not as sorry as these cigarettes. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel like I crashed a jet last night, dude. Uh, look at the poor dope. Crap in his jumpsuit and everything. Must finish biography of Loretta Swit. <laughs> biography? <laughs> Dr. Martin! Dr. Martin, you're all, are you all right? I... I am, yes. It's Dr. Martin! Call the base hospital! Come on, Doctor. Come on. Hey, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> All right, look up to your right. Well, that's an ill-fitting contact lens. Now look over to your left. That's it, yeah. Now take off those pants. Oh, baby. <sighs> All right, get up now. Idiot, you failed. You couldn't be healthy if your life depended on it. <laughs> He's like a pre allen Arkin, a proto Arkin. Well, everything seems all right. Except, can't you recall anything that happened from the time your Ooh. plane crashed until... I remember the controls froze. The next thing I saw was the main gate of the base. Your plane was completely demolished. The pilot burned to death. And you show up the picture of help. Are you sure you weren't driven here? Positive. You don't remember where you got this? <laughs> Laverne DeFazio. You know, your medical <laughs> chart shows no indication of any scars on your body. Well, I must have got it in a crash. Uh, now, this was surgery. A very skillful incision. I've never had an operation. Oh, I did have that emblandening procedure. I don't understand. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi, this is Ike. Welcome back. Mr. Briggs. Colonel Banks. How are you, Mr. Briggs? Fine, how are you? Fine. I see the FBI doesn't waste much time. Well, uh, not if we can help it, Colonel. FBI humor. It's just the best. It's... Hmm. Uh, well, I guess you gentlemen have business to discuss. Oh, no, no. This won't take a minute. Sit down. Sit down seat, gentlemen. <laughs> it's funny when people sit down. FBI yeah. joke. Oh, thank you. I understand you've already talked with Dr. Martin. I just left him. I think you'll find these addicting. You know, uh, Colonel, um, according to my files, Dr. Martin is just about the key man on this nuclear project. Yes, along with Dr. Kruger, he is. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they're both good friends, and, uh, well, both have knowledge and access to top secret information. Well, that's very true, but that's no reason to suspect that oh, they... Oh, we can, uh, we can suspect anything, Colonel. Mm -hmm. Until Dr. Martin accounts for every minute from the time of the crash. God, I'm bored. The shock must have caused a mental block. His mind doesn't want to remember the details. <laughs> the origin of the scar on his chest. How he got back to the base under his own power. Did you ever stop to think that perhaps this Dr. Martin isn't really the Dr. Martin? Mm -hmm. What are you getting at? What I mean is that uh, this man could be an imposter. 
Why, that's impossible. Killers from space, hold please. Good morning, Killers from space. I'm sorry, Peter Graves is not available. Whee! It takes a clumsy burglar to leave fingerprints that big. I don't think that there are no. things. Lumpy 50s guy. Rick speaking. Oh, oh, well, they did come through, huh? So, no refund on my hair. They do check. That's what I've been waiting for, thanks. Okay, let's see what kind of sandwich will I have. Maybe a corned grease on rye. Yeah. Get me Colonel Banks at the base, please. No, no, I'll wait. Oh, yes, Mr. Briggs. The glory of cinema. Any news on the line you were getting on Dr. Martin? Just heard from Washington. Well, I was wrong. This is our man, all right. His prints and description check right down the line. Now... Here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you bend over and kiss... Oh. <clears throat> As you say, he's in excellent physical condition, yet you're keeping him in the base hospital. Why? Mrs. Martin, you must realize that your husband is engaged in a highly secret work. Hmm. If this experience had... Well, where the hell's he going? Get, it, get back in the picture. Are you trying to tell me that Doug is... Another one! Stop that! Are you serious, Mrs. Martin? Date in the picture. His reflexes are excellent. Except for that one lapse of memory, his mind is perfectly clear. Isn't that natural under the circumstances? Oh, yeah. It's all natural yeah. and organic. Except for the question of the scar on his chest. I know he didn't have it before the crash. Well, I'm sure he didn't, Mrs. Martin. Describe your sex habits. But you see, it would be impossible for a wound of this size to have healed so quickly and without medical attention. You can't... You guys still acting over there? Well, we don't intend to. Uh, we've asked you to come down here because we've decided to let you take him home. Provided you can keep him quiet and he gets enough rest. I understand. Now we'll just have to take that vacation he's been wanting for so long. <laughs> vacation? To watch him, you'd think you never heard of one. Yes, he must have asked me a hundred times when the next test was scheduled. He's anxious to take his own readings again. There's no joy in this room. Well, he did have a key part in the planning of these projects. Well, is there anything he should or shouldn't be allowed to do? No. Except... Avoid atomic bombs. He does need diversion. Hmm. Anything that won't upset or excite him. I see. Movies, bridge, drives, things That's like right. that. Eating broth. Well, you're the doctor now. Just see that he gets plenty of rest. Thank you. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye. Bye from limbo. See you later, Major. <laughs> huh? I dreamt we were sleeping in the same bed. Ugh. Horrible. My precious. Now, I gotta stop eating the pot roast and watching the Muppets before bed. Doug, Don't come near my bed. What's the matter? I can't sleep. What time is it? Well, after three. <laughs> I'll go get myself a glass of milk. Our 600-pound alarm clock was about to go off anyway. Ah, this is no career for me. I should be hosting a show in which I tell the tales of people's lives. Call it, uh, memoir, maybe recollection. Today on Life Narrative. No, no, that's not it. Give me squadron operation. Duty desk, please. Duty desk? Is this howdy? Oh, jeez. Sorry. Helen, what did you get up for? Get your ass back in bed, you cow! Jeez! <laughs> uh, this is Dr. Martin calling. Who is this speaking? Sergeant Bandero. Anything I can do for you, Doctor? I wondered if there were any last-minute orders on another atomic test. Wait, stick it where? What do you mean you can't tell me? Sorry, sir. Regulations. I can't give out information to anyone. I don't know anything. No, sir. It won't <laughs> do you any good to come down. All right, we'll see about that. I'm down coming. Don't you agree with me? I've spent months preparing for this series of tests, and no sergeant is going to push me around now. And it's your fault. Well, aren't you going to say anything? No. Look, I know they're ready for another test, and I should be there. Can't you understand that they don't want you around for your own good? I don't need their sympathy. There's nothing wrong with me. Then why are you acting this way? You're all on edge. If you don't slow down, I don't know what's going to happen. You 
really believe that, don't you? I have no wife. Look, Doug, if you won't take it easy for your own sake, please, do it for mine. And now, the most explicit sex scene ever filmed. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you take forever. You nearly broke my jaw. Why did you cry out for Martin Landau? Hey. Ooh, watching Peter Graves get all kittenish, it's creepy. Hey, <laughs> time to get up. Go away. All right, stay in bed all day. It's almost 11 o'clock. What'd you say? Said it was almost 11 o'clock. It is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna hide the gin from you. You go put the coffee on while I get dressed. Oh. Ooh, I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Remember, this is Killers from Space. <laughs> More like Killers of Time. What? Biography canceled. Peter Graves duller than white gravy. I don't care what you say. You had no right to go ahead without me. And you, Kurt, you didn't tell me either. Why? Orders, Doug. Orders, nonsense. The least that could have been done would have been to let me know. I'm fine. I could have done my work. I hate to say this, Dr. Martin, but in your present state, you're not considered a very good security risk. Me? A security risk? My present state? What's the matter with me? How long am I to be considered? Only temporarily. The results of the test will be available for your study when you return to work. I am ready, Colonel. To us, you're still a very sick man. My <laughs> advice to you is to go home and relax, as you were ordered. Relax, relax. And if I don't? Then you'll be confined to the base hospital till you change your mind. Now, what's it gonna be? I'm gonna drink milk and yell at my wife. Well, Doctor? Oh, Dr. Martin. <laughs> I didn't expect you back so soon. I accidentally took your job. You heard? I'm a metal case. Can't even be trusted with my own work. Ah! I'm going to go berserk at any minute. Wow. Grimmel Banks will fit in on the details. Ah, uh, don't, don't tell me. Let me see. You're, uh... I know, I know. You're Miss, uh, Vincent. The secretary Jeez. I share with, uh... Oh, doctor, you can't be serious. Uh, there was no one in your office, so I thought you wouldn't mind. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. As far as I'm concerned, you can take the rest of the day off. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't really belong here. I just, uh, just came in to pick up a few personal things from my desk. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, he's got the comic touch of a Charles Bronson. From here on out, it's a completely watch-based movie. Sneaky Peter. He's headed to the can with page 31 of the Godfather bookmark. Gotta lock away my autographed picture of Wally Cox. It's worth a fortune. Now for the smooth, satisfying flavor of purple skunkweed. Mm. I guess it's recess. suit couldn't be boxier if they made it out of plywood. Every time I open the tobacco canister, it rings. Uncanny. I'm sure they won't notice the stench of his pipe. <laughs> stench. <laughs> He does have an advantage. He's so bland, people think he's furniture. Yeah. Yeah, and he's made immediately. Pete, new Vin Diesel movies down at the Regal 12. Yeah, suit yourself. Pete, the guy's still right out there. Man, he's as stealthy as a drunken baboon. <laughs> yeah, no one will notice a six foot four Swede lurking around. 
It reminds me of his days on Mission Impossible. Lots of pointless sneaking. Killers from space, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Killers. Space. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of porn. Uh, 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 uh. Maybe the space in the title is the space between actual points of interest. Oh, and what is killed is our ability to care. Yeah, it's a good theory. Thanks. You might be on to something. Housekeeping. I come back later. Hotel you Probably shouldn't poop here. That'd be a pretty big clue. Dun da dun da dun da dun da dun da ba 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 bland da 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 Eleven twenty eight looked at a door. Yeah. Deek, a man Sorry, General. Oh no, someone stole all the spare A-bombs. Sergeant Glan's head springs into action. Main gate, main gate, please. Just a minute, Doctor. Yeah, just a minute, Doctor. Main gate, Sergeant Main Price. gate. Dr. Kruger? Dr. Kruger, Dr. Yeah. Kruger. Kruger. No, he checked out. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting, Doctor. That's all right. Okay, Doctor. Will you sign out, please? Much love, big giant traitor. We'll post a couple of men outside of Dr. Kruger's office. Cora, get me the CIA. Get me Colonel Banks at the officers' club. Thank you, Doctor. Thank Good you night. Sir, not, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Wait, wait, wait. I believe, yes, these must be the killers from space. They drove yeah, from give, space. Give, give it up, Bill. Bill. <laughs> there aren't no going to be any killers from space, are there? No, not a one. <laughs> oh. Good evening, Dr. Kruger. Yes? My name's Briggs. I'm from the FBI. Briggs. Briggs. Of course. I've heard of you. <laughs> I wonder if you'd mind uh, returning to your office with me. Well, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, just a few things we'd like to straighten out. Concerns me? Well, I'm afraid so, Doctor. And take your own car if you like. I'll meet you there. All right, I will. Okay, porn, porn, porn. No, it's all here. The papers seem to be intact. Is this all uh, classified information, Doctor? Of course. You know, according to security regulations, that vault should have been locked before you left. But I'm certain I did lock it. All right, then tell me this. Who besides yourself has access to the combination? Well, the... Colonel here and Dr. Martin. And Alger Hiss and the Rosenbergs and... Oh, crap. Oop, problem. He was in the building this afternoon. That's right. We saw him in my office. He left around 4 o'clock on orders. He dismissed his secretary a few minutes later, but he... He didn't sign out of here until 20 minutes after you left. Mm. After I did. Well, there must be some mistake. I personally checked his office just as I was leaving and he wasn't there. You always do that, Doctor? No, but Dr. Martin has been acting... Well... Swedish. Quite strange of late. Yes, he certainly has. His wife telephoned to say that he hadn't come home as usual. I was very much concerned about it. I love him very much. So am I. He still hasn't shown up yet. Your lack of smoking troubles me, Bob. Mm. Peter Graves, scat. I'd recognize it anywhere. What kind of pipe tobacco do you use, Dr. Cooper? Me? Panama Red, of course. <laughs> I don't smoke at all. Did you, Colonel? Cigarettes. What are you driving at? Oh, you don't eat it. That's funny. That's funny how I teleported into another scene. How long has Dr. Martin been using this brand of tobacco? Well, I really don't know why. Well, now, Mrs. Martin, you say you have no idea where he could be at this time. <laughs> why is he well, yelling? I've never been this late before without telephoning. Well, I hate to ask this. She's but right have you there. Ever had Stop yelling. Any suspicion that there might be another woman? Certainly not. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Cute. 
Just why are you asking me these questions? Well, let's put it this way. Has he made any new friends lately? You know, people not in the usual group. Jews, for instance. No, the only people we've seen have been connected with the Institute. Okay, that's lunch, people. It's a wrap. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Mr. Briggs. Oh, thank you. Wee-hoo. I'm as happy as a clam. Officer Pompadour. All units in sector code 4. Repeating, code 4. Be on the lookout for two-tone coupe. License number 1W67713. Got to get to Malcolm Forbes' place. Repeating, all units, code 4. Missing, Dr. Douglas P. as in Paul Mott. Male Caucasian, 32 years of age. Height, 6 foot 3. Weight, 195 pounds. Face, bland. Personality, nil. Acting skills, none. Aha! Aha! A killer! Oh, Bill. <laughs> and, and he occupies space, correct? Come on, Bill. Killer from Nothing. space! Nothing. No. Dr. Martin. You have hands like a girl. What are you doing with this? Ah! An Easter ham Special with eyes. <laughs> for placing it under this rock. What is the point? <laughs> Oh, I just hate guys with bigger faces than me. I'm the big face around here. Okay, thanks. I'll call you. I will give nothing. I will radiate blandness with everything that is within me. That is my vow. I'm going to drive all the way to space to meet the killers. I better tank up. <gasps> See? Killers from space. Okay. Where's your phone? Over there behind the pump. <laughs> He's buying gas from a retired Bowery boy. I haven't yelled at my wife in a while. Hi, honey, this is Peter. What the hell are you doing out of bed? Operator, give me Crestview 95359. All units in Sector 7, Code 4. Repeating. He's code listening to his four. air freshener. License number 1W67713. Stupid, not in bed, wife. Operator, are you sure you're dialing the right number? We'll try it again, will you? It's my home. There ought to be someone there now. That's logical. Highway 66 and Beach. Ambulance en route. Car 17. Code 7. Okay, anything else, Mr. Fugitive? Don't be angry. Whoa, way too close. <laughs> really? Way too close to Peter Graves. Male Caucasian. 32 years of age. Height 6 foot 3. Weight 195 pounds. Color of hair blonde. Color of eyes blue. Color of funny? Sucked. Dr. Douglas Peter. Yeah, yeah. Male Caucasian. You forgot your green stamps and your Johnny Unitas highball glass. Got a call biography. Tell them their host escaped. Operator, give me the police, quick. Here's another script page for the incinerator. <laughs> Is this Brazil? <laughs> it's the Department of Bureaus. <laughs> the Earth gave birth to a boxy man. Come in, Briggs. Calling car six. Calling car six. Code 11. Code 11. Central calling. Come in, Briggs. This is Hearst 5. Go ahead. Hello, Central. Hello, Central. This is Briggs. This is Briggs. Come in. Subject, Dr. Douglas Martin, last seen in Route 61, heading toward North Junction. We offer this random shot of an air conditioner for your pleasure. Roger. Briggs, out. No, I can't speak for Stratton. Okay, 
Okay. Go ahead. All right. Peter Graves driving around in a station wagon. What do you think? I love it. Green light. How much money do you need, Mike? <laughs> Why don't I just give you a blank check right here and a couple of Coke cores? Beautiful, baby. <laughs> Let me steal your cookie. <laughs> it's time to face your maker on the Muppet Show tonight. Oh. Glenn Campbell on any given Friday night. <laughs> Another blandness related accident. Blandness kills. Here they're gonna here. They're here. They're here. They're queer. Get used to it. They're going to destroy us. He's coming out of it. So, I'm going to leave. <laughs> it's all right, Dr. Martin. You're with friends. You'll be all right. No, let me go. Let me go. Cook up a Daddy quick now. batch of meth here. He'll kill everyone. We've got to stop them. Easy, Doug. Easy. It's too early to try to act. Dr. Martin, we removed a gerbil from your sphincter and issued a press release to that effect. I... Don't think you'll have any problem living it down, though. <laughs> what did you give him? Sodium amytal. Truth serum. To deprive his mind of any imagination. I guess you'll make sense now. I'll get the recorder ready. Just grab a quick porterhouse. Can you hear me, Dr. Martin? Yes. I had to remove your penis. Do you understand? Now listen to me. I want you to count backwards from 100. Do you understand? Backwards mm. from 100. Mm -hmm. 100. 6. 99. Yeah. 88. His brow has a beer Seven. gut. See? 96. Tears. Mm. 95. 94. Oh, you can ask him questions now. Walter Winchell, New York Post. Dr. Martin. What were you doing with the information you took from Dr. Kruger's vault? I was delivering it. Delivering it? But where? To the rocks in Soledad Flats? No, to the stones at yes. Altamont. To Soledad Flats. And where we crashed. We were drunk, so we crashed at Bob's. I was delivering it, just as I was ordered. Who ordered you to do this, Dr. Martin? I'll tell you the whole story. Son of Sam's dog ordered me. I remember we were circling the atomic cloud. So there was an object blowing beneath us at Soledad Flats. Good. Let's run it back to the beginning of the film and start We're over. Down to investigate. Infinite loop here. Controls jammed. Couldn't pull out. Felt too good, man. Strange and eerie, pulsing in front of me. Then one of them lowered it toward my chest. Oh, a glass block bed. Nice. With my own heart. Could it, could it be? Hey, hey, look, guys, killers from space! Well, we, we don't know if they're from space yet. Oh, come on, look at their goofy eyeballs. What happened? <laughs> what is this place? There's steam cleaning his nipples. Who are you? What are you doing to me? Can't you speak? Who are you? Tell me who you are. Tell me your biography. <laughs> we made your heart modular, so if you got any problems, you can just pop her back out. Tim, I swear that new mascara just makes your eyes pop. I guess gifted triage surgeons from space didn't have the same ring. No. Step forward. And check out my antique gas pump. <laughs> Dr. Martin, I see you are quite well. <laughs> You have recovered from your unfortunate <laughs> accident. Nice. Who are you? Red Eyeball. A scientist, like yourself. Where do you come from? From a planet, yet unknown to you. From a planet. Space. You know my name. You speak English. We speak every language. Cha. Can't expect me to believe that. 
I'm getting out of here. Stay where you are. It's our automatic touch-free wedgie giver. Wow, my shorts are actually inside out. <laughs> Let me cut you off a slice of our giant gyros. Who are you? I have already told you that. How did you get here? Let me show you here. Ah, crap. Thing works like 3% of the time. Come on, you son of a... Over here. Okay. In our machines magnetically propelled across the electron bridge, we have three... Electron bridge? Took these with my camcorder. They're kind of fun. I mean, you come and go, just like that, without anyone ever seeing you? Come Our ahead. ships have been sighted on numerous occasions by your people. Then why haven't we been able to track one down? We have a warning system similar to your primitive radar. Hey, that's just low. Our machines are set to change course at the mere approach of a pursuing object. That's got a sweet cummerbund there. Mm -hmm. Let's say I do believe you. Where are we right now? In a cavern within the upper crust of the earth. A delicious crispy crust. How long have you been here? Since the beginning of your experiments in nuclear fission. What have you got to do with that? We are accumulating the energy released with each of your atomic explosions. Oh, 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 crap. I didn't buy the service contract and now I'm kicking myself. Tin foil or no? No tin Paul is a dead man. Miss him, miss him. No, we don't. He don't. I let it. No, no, no. Yeah, you know. No, you know. He actually said, "Nanu, nanu." Yes, you know. Yeah, we don't. We don't. No, need it. What was that? A report from the monitor we sent to the surface to obtain the results of your last nuclear test. Results. We'll take days to analyze and compute. I think you will find the figures are correct. Why, this is 12th grade algebra. I feel so primitive. I can't believe it. You guys really suck. Where is that man? You don't recognize the area? No. He is in the vicinity where you crashed. Uh, way to kill your friend, by the way. That rock was glowing. No, it isn't. <laughs> glowing? A normal reaction in view of the amount of radiation absorbed. You have a remarkable memory, Doctor, considering the fact that you did not survive the crash. What do you mean? The mechanism of your heart had ceased to function. It was necessary for us to revive it. You were dead. I was dead? I've always felt dead, but to actually be dead. So that's what they were doing. Why'd they go in through my sphincter? You didn't even try to help the pilot. Why did you save me? Because we had an important need of your services. Such as? Uh, excuse me, this thing's acting up again. Come on, you piece of sh... Come on, I hate this thing! Look this way, Doctor. You will understand. I can't look that way. I don't have four-inch eyeballs. <laughs> Get up. You are the first of your world to be looking at our solar system, Ooh. the Astron. This is our planet, Astron Delta. That's where the Astron Blues were born. It occupies the fourth position in relation to this, our sun. Our sun, Timmy. Yes, go on. Middens! During the 23rd time rotation, our sun began to die. So, during the succeeding generations, as our planet began to cool... Cool! ...vegetation began to disappear. Our eyes developed to this state to combat <laughs> the ever-growing darkness. We were forced to migrate. It looks a little like Buzz Lightyear. You yeah. left your planet? Where? We invaded these neighboring planets. Middens. <laughs> they were nearer to our sun. My son is married now. I'm retired, so I can help out with his two boys. 
bought my grandson this erector set and he made this so I took some video. He did this in two days. Don't you think he's creative? <laughs> On strings. How many of us? All of us. Well over one billion. There were feeble attempts to stop us, but we were prepared for such contingencies. Uh, the feeble ones, that is. And now that our sun is about to completely expire, we must move again in order to survive. So they're interstellar Jodes. Yours is the only planet in this solar system capable of supporting our civilization. And our eyebrows. This is fantastic. Over a billion of you trying to come here to Earth. It is fantastic, isn't it? We have no alternative. We have been putting our plan to work for some time. At the proper moment, the invasion will be launched from our platforms, which are being readied in space. Sorry, more video from my grandson. He did this on his Mac. Nothing can stop us. Unless you have guns. You don't have guns, do you? Or the common cold? Because, man, that would wipe us out. <laughs> This is ridiculous. <laughs> you cannot find your way in or out of this cavern. Do not try to leave. Sure thing. See ya, frog boy. <laughs> the ever graceful Peter Graves. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, hey, Pete, how you doing? Exit that way. Son of a... What's the reset? Co Barb, what do you punch in here? Yeah. Chase music or atonal nightmare? Now don't let George Crumb write your chase music for you. Or R. Crumb. Poor slob couldn't find his way out of a room with one door. I, 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 I hate the all Peter Graves channel. Middens. No, no, I don't want to be some bug eyed alien's wife. They forgot to put a back on their jail cell. Guy can watch the hell out of TV. World's clumsiest spider. I tripped over my first four legs. <laughs> Monstrous spiders give me a mild headache. I don't remember this episode as being part of my biography. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's puking. I didn't think spiders did that. Now he's on channel 38, too. <laughs> Look at him stumbling around like a drunken idiot. Ooh, cold in here. Ooh, wow. Brr. There's something you don't see every day, a giant roach doing clapping push-ups. It's a grasshopper operating a punch press. <laughs> Those are the clumsiest animals ever. They're all falling off the ladders, tripping on their feet. It's an insane clown lizard.
Hey, it's literally a great horny toad. Ow, cracked my sternum. Ow. Oh, hey, hi, maybe you can help me. There's all these giant creatures and... Oh, you're one of them, I see. Give me here, personal space pal. Graham. You know, guys, this is actually a well-known editing technique. No kidding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called take all the pieces of film and throw them on the floor, then paste them back together randomly. All right. Yeah. Michael Bay uses that, doesn't mm -hmm. he? So does Joel Schumacher. All right. Hey guys, a lizard! <laughs> That's new! Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, I'm trying to be hopeful, but no sale. <laughs> no, it's not working. Wow, crisp acceleration on the new Peter Graves. <laughs> oh, come on, now he's just revisiting former lizards. Were, were people in the 50s actually impressed by this? <sighs> well, they were drunk. True. Yeah, you have to remember that about the 50s, Mike. They drank a lot of gin. Right. So they appreciated the lugubrious, meandering quality. Here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes a certain sense, I guess. You, uh, you got any of that gin on you? Sadly, no. So, you have discovered our menagerie. <laughs> Don't you think you will be more at ease on this side of the cage? Marvel at our superior gate sliding technology. <laughs> it's horrible. What are you doing here? We are breeding our, shall I say, armies. Call them comquats for all I care. Carnivorous insects and animals? Present. Their growth is due to a change in their genes. Mm. With your next nuclear test, these animals will multiply at a rate beyond imagination. Take that back! Sometimes we will unleash them. They will spread to every continent and devour every living thing on the surface of the Earth. What good will that do you? How could you expect to survive better than we? We have provided for that. Okay, work this time. I really need this to punctuate my dramatic speech. Oh, crap! No, Doctor. Look over there. Use your pathetically small eyes to look over there. We will use their bodies to fertilize the soil. I'm smoking a roach. Vegetation will rise up in abundance. A new era of civilization will begin. Gamma rays? Shouldn't that bug be the Hulk, then? You see, Doctor, we have arranged for everything. Even lunch. Come taste how good our deviled eggs are. Mm. A minute. All this equipment? Our nuclear storage unit. <laughs> to date, we have accumulated several billion electron volts a trip. as a result of your atomic explosions. Several billion? I, uh, a chain reaction at this point could release enough unstable isotopes to, to create a new and powerful element. Might be impossible to control. True. You got me. Damn. An element that will never be known by your scientists. I can assure you the strength of this new element will... Well, this is a powder cake. It would go up at any minute. Death on my line. I assure you, Doctor, we have everything under our complete control. So shut your tiny-eyed face up. What force could possibly be strong enough to harness the... The great taste of strawberries. You control your whole operation by electricity. Of course, no generators, no generators. That means you're getting your power from somewhere on the surface. It must be passing through here. You have heard enough, Dr. Martin. Step inside. I've heard enough, Dr. Martin. I'll tell you that much. Sure. Right. Yeah. What do you want from me? You will have access to advanced information relative to the time and strength of the forthcoming atomic tests. What about it? 
He will provide us with that information as soon as it is available. I see. Uh, hey, look, it's my agent back there. Get me out of this stupid movie. You're afraid of an overload. You pussy. <laughs> you can't tap enough electricity wherever you get it from to control a strong enough charge. You are a clever man, Doctor. Really? Perhaps too clever. And what makes you think I'll give you any information? It is the only way you can save your own life when the time comes. You will be transported to one of our platforms in space and resettled here when our operation is completed. You're asking me to sabotage the entire world, three billion people. They are doomed in any case. True, we are too stupid to survive. Yeah. I guess there's no alternative. I'll have to do as you say. Great, have a Slurpee. You are lying, Doctor. Your only wish is to betray us. No. I love you guys. I know. Your thoughts have been recorded. All three of them. <laughs> Lie, Detective? Call it what you like. You force me to resort to other methods. I will contact our space station. Oh, come on. oh son. You are an unwilling subject, Dr. Martin. Hmm? What? Who are you? I am the great and powerful Dan. I am the Tala. You will listen and obey. It's the same guy. <laughs> no, I... You will listen to my orders. Same guy. And obey. You will listen and obey. Listen and obey. By Jove, I think he's got it. You will remember nothing you have seen or heard here. <laughs> Nothing but my orders, which you will obey. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, that was easy. You will obtain the data and bring it to the stone near the place the where the plane was wrecked. The same the guy. Stone. What have you seen or heard here? <laughs> I recorded that earlier, <laughs> sucker. What have you seen or heard here? Or smelt? Nothing. Repeat my orders. I will obtain the data and bring it to the stone. And I'll fade out at the real change. Oh, well, that's what I did. I took the information to where they told me. I didn't realize I was being mesmerized. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Four of them. And you were there? And you? And you? Why doesn't somebody say something? Don't you believe me? <laughs> Kurt, you understand? <laughs> These giant animals breeding by the millions, they'll devour everything unless we stop them. Of course, Doug, we will. Colonel. Colonel, you've got to arrange to set off another bomb tonight. The strongest charge we have. They're beneath the ground with all their equipment. We can blow them to pieces. Now, wait a minute. A strong charge will overload their units. I think your unit's overloaded, Peter. You don't believe me, Colonel? Sweet smack. Take me away from all this. Kurt? Of course we do. Easy, Doug. Easy. You think I'm crazy, all of you. Well, I'm not, do you understand? Everything I said is true. I saw it with my own eyes. Give me a hand up. Now, let me go. Get the pillow. Cover his face. I'll hold his arms. Steady, steady. Take it easy now. Take it easy. We'll talk this whole thing over. Ow! Did you have to inject it into my hip bone? Howie. What are you doing to me now? And just rest quietly. <laughs> That's it. Let the Drano do its work. Well, I'm ready for my own Manhattan project, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mrs. Martin should be along any minute now. She went for their car. What'll I tell her? Oh, say you love her! Well, he's in a state of shock. Tell her he's resting quietly. If you'll excuse me, I think I'd better wait for her at the information desk. Well, Dr. Martin seems to be indestructible, except for those hallucinations. Those weren't hallucinations, Colonel. Under the influence of sodium amytol, a patient loses all control of his imagination. And his bladder. Well, then he shouldn't be able to fabricate those stories. That's right. Major, you're not trying to tell us that everything he said was true. Look, gentlemen, I can only give you the medical facts. 
As for the rest, you'll have to decide for yourself. Excuse me, please. He doesn't even smoke, does he? Whoa, Grandpa's driving. Hit the deck. Oh, made a nice car out of his bathtub. Hmm. Well, looks like it's going to be a bad day at Black Rock. Guess the movie just stopped to take a stroll here. <laughs> yes, 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 and and I'll call it Las Vegas. Good evening, Dr. Kruger. I wasn't masturbating, by the way. Really, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Briggs, you startled me. I didn't expect to see anyone here. Well, uh, neither did I, Doctor. Well, I suppose you want me to explain why I'm here. Mm-hmm. No, oh, why? Why the close-ups? We've worked together a long time. Anyway, I just had to come out here and check for myself. Check what, Doctor? For an entrance or an exit to the caverns he described. <laughs> I'm afraid you're wasting your time. A cigarette, Doctor? No, thank you. Tommy. See, we've already covered the entire area. We couldn't find a thing. Then, what about that scar? I'd like to see... Oh, Mrs. Mark. Hello? No. Hello? How is he, Doctor? Oh, he's resting fine. I think he'll be all right. How's the car? Did you get the flowers I sent? I want a short backless gown and I want it now. It was an FTD pick-me-up bouquet. Did it ever arrive? Biography? Is that you? There's nothing to worry about. Keep away from me. Keep away, I said. Doc! Let me go. They're after me. Nobody's after me. Dr. Martin. Keep away. Doc, he's trying to help you. I don't need the help. I can button my shirt by myself. I'm a big boy. I, I want to see Kurt right away. Now you control yourself, and I'll call him just as soon as you get back to your room. Look at how she's dressed. What a slut. Yeah, what does she think? This this girl's gone wild? <laughs> now you get back into bed, and I'll call Dr. Kruger. There are plenty of things I haven't injected you with yet. Uh, I've got to figure something out before he gets here. I need a... Pencil, some paper, and a slide rule. I'll see that you get it. Oh, can I have Dr. Kruger, please? Yes, you who can have Dr. Kruger, please. <laughs> Dr. Kruger speaking. Woof, woof. Oh, yes, Major. How is he? <laughs> All right, I'll be over in a few minutes. What a good boy. Yeah, it's a good boy. Let's see, mission difficult. No, not strong enough. Hmm. Doug. Doug. Ah, he forgot his character's name again. Let me try this. Peter. Doug. Uh, hang on, honey. Mission inflatable. No, that's just ridiculous. Hmm. Um, yeah, could someone pull the plug in there, please? Thanks. Mission easy. No, that's going the wrong way. Yeah. Kurt! Helen, I got here as soon as I could. Is there anything wrong? He's much better. Imagine he's even started working. He asked for paper and a side rule. That's interesting. In a dull sort of way. Wonder what he's up to? Formulas, equations. Anyway, whatever he says, pretend to agree with him. Major Cliff's orders. Of course. Love your clown striped dress, by the way. Yeah. Dead Kurt's here. Hello, Doug. In just a second, I'm almost finished. I'll take your hat. Thank you. Stop touching my knee. Kurt? Weird. Let's face it. I know that you all think there's something wrong with me. No, of course not. No, I, I was not you after the story I told last night. Well, frankly, you did have us a little worried asking that the bomb be dropped because of what you said. You don't believe me either. Kurt, I tell you, I've been there. I no, that is just not fair. Why? 
But I don't need a bomb to stop them. I figured it out. It's all here. Now look. Here's the nuclear strength of our last test. Here's a drawing of a liger. <laughs> Pretty much my favorite animal. Let me see that. I had to <laughs> estimate the conversion rate for their transformers. Oh, These figures are correct. Such transformers must operate on a constant supply of electricity. Could they get that much electric power? Only one way. They must tap it from the main lines of the powerhouse. Could do it by parallel induction. Nobody would ever know the difference. Good doctor. All we have to do doctor. is to cut it off. No doctor. Easy doctor. Cut off the power. We can't do that. It would cause untold damage for miles around. Such a power stoppage must be planned in advance. Eight to ten seconds, that's all I need. That gap in supply will short out their resistors and the whole thing will go up. Mm -hmm. But you won't go along with that. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Escalates quickly. That right. Now look, you're carrying it out of our way. No one likes my cool power cutting ideas. <laughs> Into the Petermobile. <laughs> Please call the main gate and try to stop Dr. Martin. Do you think I look like a cod? <laughs> Dr. Picard, hurry! Uh, I, I kind of was hurrying, but... Uh... Dr. Martin! Stop! Well, the Russians have the bomb now. What are you going to do? He did what? How long ago? Right, we'll leave immediately. Was it about my cigarette? What's wrong, Colonel? Dr. Martin, he's on his way to the powerhouse, wants to cut off the power supply. Let's go. So no time for a jarring close-up of anyone's face? Apparently yeah. not. I couldn't stop him, Doctor. He went that way. That way? There only is one way. <laughs> well, th thank you. Without the scene, I would have assumed they hang glided there. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's Studebaker, an economy car. Got six miles to the gallon. Donut Park, home of the world's largest blazed. Do not park. Do not. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's parking, isn't he? He just flagrantly. Hey, don't park! <laughs> Freedom! In, in terms of parking. So, uh, an insane man in his pajamas comes to sabotage his power plant, and all he can say is, No parking! Just move your car out of that space, and I'm happy to let you bring in your dynamite and fuses and whatnot. I bet he's looking for a giant on-off switch. <laughs> this one guy parked, and I'm really upset. Uh huh. Security guards annoying you again? Yeah, the guy's a freak. Yep. Look, you're fired, okay? Yeah, all right. We know you parked illegally. Oh, man, my truss is too tight. <laughs> Okay, you run up the stairs. I'll look here. Action bathrobe. <gasps> Another nondescript car full of nondescript people. Yay! Hey, At least they're parking legally. Yeah. Sorry, was I not going fast enough for you? Hurry. Combination filing cabinet and washing machine. Nice. He isn't back there. Let's go. I have been. Sorry, did that not qualify as going? <laughs> Where's the driver of this car? He went into the building. You know, in all fairness, this is the only way to get service from any major utility. Well, that is true. <laughs> this is where they turn into the Fantastic Four, right? Well, or at least the somewhat less boring four?
It's hard to tell who's who without the camera a quarter inch from their faces. We gotta take the stairs. Let's go. Hurry. Oof. Oof. <sighs> now each one of them punches that hapless plant worker in turn. Yes, we need more dials. Hey, Gail Gordon's first job. What do you want? Where are the main switches? Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you sleepwalking or something, mister? Where the switches that follow that plant area? Where are they? But should we hurry? <laughs> oh. I gotta get it. It's mom. Control room. Yeah. Big ugly <laughs> Swede, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, no fair. Come on, show me those switches. Come on. All right. Cut that power. Now look, cut it. <laughs> you said cut it. <laughs> now the next one. I don't want to do the next one. <laughs> Stupid dog. Next. Go on. That'll turn the power off for a hundred miles. Do as I say. Or no biography for you. Here it is. Stay where you are. Where you were, I guess. Down that gun, Dr. Martin. I'm warning you, Colonel. How many closer and I'll kill you. Now the next one. Well, we have a thing we call acceptable losses. What's this one? That's the master switch. Cut it. Doug, please, don't. I said cut it. Get back or I'll kill him. Go, Go on, get back. Do as he says. Yeah, I need a cigarette anyway. Give me ten seconds after I cut the power. If I mean nothing will happen and you can do what you want me. But if I'm right... Y'all are gonna suck my... No, Bill, <laughs> hey, no! no. One. A little strong. Two. Three, get your four, hand off my ass. Five. Really, Kevin, six, get your get your hand off. It's weird. Hand Eight. Over here. This way. Let's go. Hurry. <laughs> so we're apparently in a plane flying about twenty-five thousand feet over the ground now. Solar that flats right in the button. Took out Winslow too, but that's okay. Yeah. Just as he said. He said kaboom? <laughs> he blew them to pieces. Pieces. It's beautiful, darling. Yeah. Now eyeballs start raining down. <laughs> Screenplay by Bill Raynor. So he's the guy who wrote all the hurries and come ons. And extreme close-up, large, meaty face. Mm -hmm. Pretty lame plan by the big eyeball guys, huh? No, well, Hollywood teaches us that aliens are advanced but very stupid. Yeah, it's true. War of the Worlds, that M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong movie. Yeah, my, my theory, guys, is that the aliens send their dumbest people to Earth. Kill off the idiots, help the gene pool a bit. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, yeah. a, good, uh, that's a good theory. Yep. Duh. Well, apparently we're done.